Hi, I'm Lisa Singer. I am the Deputy Editorial Director at Media Post, and this is Brand Insider BTS, where I get to pull back the curtain on some of the most influential women marketers today. And with me, I have Cheryl Mills Knight. She is the Senior Vice President of Brand and Culture at Kendra Scott. Welcome, Cheryl. Well, thank you so much for having me. It is an honor. Yeah, no, I'm so excited that you're uh, doing this. I, and I feel funny saying, Thanks, you know, for, you know, welcome. Like I'm, I'm welcoming you to my Zoom, <laughs> but, but I love that we can actually see each other and connect. And although we will be seeing each other in person in a month that for the retail summit in Lake Tahoe. Super excited about that. Yeah, no, I can't wait. So that will be fun. But for now, we're sort of forgetting about strategy, which is what we'll be talking about uh, in Lake Tahoe. But instead, I really want to, you know, sort of hear about you and just how you got started. And especially, I mean, you, we're one of the founding members of Kendra Scott. I mean, you were like, I think there was like seven of you and now it's this billion dollar business. Talk about that. And I know it was seven women and I might have the number wrong. It might be, is, I believe it's seven, but women who all came together to do this. What was that experience like? Well, I will say, and of course, looking back, it was a magical time. Uh, so for me, it was the first time I was merging my two passions, jewelry design and graphic design. Uh, I know that that was the case for most of the team in the early days, as we were, a, a lot of us were young in our careers. We all had a love of fashion and jewelry, and that was really a rare industry in Austin at the time. And oh gosh, we just, we worked together. We were a small group of, of women. Uh, and we were really positive, very hardworking. We had a lot of ambition. We had a willingness to learn and we really cared for one another. Um, you know, then you, of course, uh, many know Kendra. I mean, she's a fearless leader and she was incredible in dreaming big. And she believed in us. She believed in all of the things that we could do. She believed in the possibility of what we could do together. Um, I remember one of my, uh, well, it was my first day and Kendra sat me down and was super excited. This, this little story tells you the energy of, of what it was back in the day. She sat me down and she was like, oh, Cheryl, I'm so glad you're here. We finally have this most amazing opportunity to do a jewelry design line for Oscar de la Renta's spring 2006 collection. We need to design a sample collection and put an incredible presentation together. We need to absolutely wow them. And so I'm so glad you're here. I was the first marketing hire uh, for the company. And so she was like, oh, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, real quick. I just want to let you know, we only have one week to do this. Wow. And I sat, my <laughs> eyes got bigger and bigger. This is my first day. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, how can I do this? How can I do this? I had complete, every, every part of my fear body became present and she could see it. She could see that kind of like, uh, and she said, Cheryl, you got this. We got this. And so that anything can, anything is possible, can do personality that Kendra had mixed with our collective willingness to figure things out, to try things. I mean, we tried so many different things in those early years when we were a wholesale um, only company, mm -hmm. but that trying, that trying and pitching to all kinds of different people, it just uh, gave us the experience of being unstoppable. You know, one day after another, you try, you try, and you're like, it created this momentum. And so we just rolled up our sleeves and together made magic happen as a collective sisterhood. And it was just really special. Well, and I have to ask because obviously the idea of starting with a company brand new, I mean, I, I personally, I love that too, creating something. And then you, as you said, you can kind of just let it mold and do what you can do and keep just putting it out there. Would you give that same advice to someone today? You know, cause this was how many years ago when you were first starting Kendra Scott? So this is our 20th year okay. and it is, I actually celebrated my 17th year anniversary yesterday. Oh, wow. Congrats. Happy anniversary. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank so, you. All right. So we're talking 17 years ago, obviously things have changed, but a lot is the same with, you know, you have both. Is that an advice, some advice you would give someone 
today or is there maybe a caveat to that? I would say it's a caveat. I mean, you need to build a team. You have to build a team of people with a collective vision. Uh, the collective vision in a way was we wanted to be there for one another. We didn't have it defined in a beautiful brand statement. We didn't have it defined until a little bit later, but what you want is to have a team that supports, um, supports you. So our collective vision in a way that we uncovered uh, after a few years, so we really believed in showing up and caring for one another like family. That meant one of my fondest memories is having, I didn't have children until seven years ago. So in the early, early days, some of the other young mothers would bring their ch children in. And I remember having one of my coworkers' sons, a little baby on one knee and a camera in the other hand. And I was so happy. That just made me so happy because she had a moment where she didn't have to have her child around and it made my, my work at the time more fun. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of uh, energy that we had. We were just showing up for one another. And so that sisterhood um, is, it, is our number one core value. We always lead with family. And then over the course of time, we were able to put our vision into our values and put it into a value set as we define as family, fashion, and philanthropy. And we used those three words, but the concepts behind them to serve as our North Star in everything we do at our company. But it was a discovery process for us. At the beginning, we were just being family oriented. We were being creative and innovative and having fashion be the, if you will, the thing that drew us all to one another. And then we were also giving back. Mm -hmm. Someone would ask for a donation. Yeah. Uh, they were a societal auction or a school event. They knew that they could call us and we would always say yes. We became known as a business that would always give. And so we gave what we could back in the day, which was jewelry. We would make a piece and, and give it. And, and we were just really generous. We also rolled up our sleeves together and made time to go and volunteer at organizations like Meals on Wheels, where we delivered food during our lunch hour together. So inherently, we were living our truths. And then it wasn't until those early, early 2010, when we were dreaming into opening up a re retail store that we were like, oh, we want to bring these core values to our customer. We want to bring them to life. Mm -hmm. We had done some work around who are we? What are we doing? Um, how, how do we want to exist in the world? What do we want to create? And how do we want to do retail differently? So it, it was a discovery process, but it was also deducting who we are and what really mattered to us. And it was those three core values of family, fashion, and philanthropy that have shaped who we have become today. Right. So what I would suggest and recommend anyone launching their business, you take the time to get clear on why you do what you do. Like establish your why. We all know the value of Simon Sinek's start with why, but really, really allow that process to help you to define your core values and let those values, that collective vision, to be what you build your relationships on, both with your team and your customers. And let those values guide all of your decision-making. Let them become integral into your business. Let them shape your story and live your values and right. build your brand with integrity. Well, and that's my best advice. <laughs> But no, I mean, and it basically, it sounds, you know, as you said, you knew what you guys were, you didn't know what you were going to evolve to. You didn't have that big picture plan. And that's not necessarily what you need to have because yes, you can have this big picture plan and who's to say it's ever going to get there. But if you, as long as you define who you are as a brand or who you want to be and you stay true to those, it sounds like that's where you can then keep taking it you know, who's to say Kendra ever thought she'd be opening stores, you know, so it's just, oh, she's more off retail. 
Yeah. She had a failed hat business years before in the retail sector. She was like, didn't want to go into retail at all. Mm -hmm. And so that was it. That's why we were a wholesale only business for eight years. So yeah. yes, yep, we exactly. didn't know exactly where we were headed. But no, and I, I think that's really smart. And I, as I said, I do think that's why I think things have changed. Yes, there are certain things you can start, you know, maybe that you could do, you know, 20 years ago that you can't do today. But I do think those core values are really what makes a difference today or yesterday. Um, but I want to talk about you in the sense of, I know when you initially uh, went to school and you came out doing more design graphics, that kind of thing. And um, I think you graduated with a degree in German studies. So that is true. I don't, I don't <laughs> see that maybe uh, marketing maybe wasn't in the, you know, in your immediate future, at least at that time of what you were thinking. So talk about that. When, what were you wanting at that time how did you see your career going? And then how did it come to where we are today? I understand it's hard to connect the dots from <laughs> German studies to brand strategy in a marketing career. Completely get it. Um, and something about me is that I have always followed my passion. I honestly am not a huge like planner. Mm -hmm. I am a feeler. And I, uh, I set the intention for, if you will, the why or what do I want to accomplish, not so much the specifics. So for me, I went to the university, uh, the University of Texas, um, to study German because in high school, I was involved in a German exchange program and I fell in love with a German boy. He was my first <laughs> love. So of course I went to the university and I wanted to study uh, German and German studies because I wanted to know him better. And I wanted to know all of these amazing friends that I was in, uh, involved with. I wanted to get to know them. I loved being in Germany. It, it was one of the greatest experiences of my youth was to go travel independently without my family and be immersed in another culture. So that's why I went to the university and I did not have in my sphere of sensation, I didn't have mentors uh, around me, didn't have parents. I had a parent that was a teacher and a, a parent who is really involved in the military. I didn't have art or branding or creative uh, as, as really a possibility. Mm -hmm. So maybe being the youngest of three daughters, my other two sisters were CPAs, they were just a little bit more relaxed with me going to school to just study German, but I didn't necessarily have a plan outside of wanting to be able to speak to my friends. The boyfriend. So, what was his name? <laughs> one star. <laughs> so, so fabulously, uh, because I do believe the universe conspires in my favor constantly and consistently, I was able to work at the University of Texas in the Germanic Studies Department um, for the first six months. I was really, after graduating, I was really good at it. I was really great organized. I grew up with a very, uh, again, analytical, structure-oriented, and so I did this world really well. And then I was bored. Honestly, I was just bored. And all throughout, from I remember as early as my being in kindergarten, I made jewelry. I made all kinds of different types of jewelry. In middle school, I would make uh, paper mache earrings that went with my outfit for the for the day. I mean, I would just spend stay up late at night and dream into jewelry and fashion and things. So I was hand making jewelry on the side. Um, and that was just kind of fun. Um, honestly, I had an opportunity to take a job at a front desk at an interior design firm. And while it was only a front desk job, I was like, well, at least I'm going to be in a creative space and I can be around creatives. And that really, I took the leap from my Germanic studies administrative job at the university. And I went and started this front desk job. And that is actually where I met Kendra. I met Kendra before she started Kendra Scott, uh, the business, the jewelry line. And 
I was making, um, like I said, at the time I was still making jewelry and I was getting into more semi-precious stones and sterling silver findings. And I was wearing my jewelry to work. I was dressing up to be at the front desk of an interior design firm. I had to look amazing. And so I would make my jewelry and she was doing PR for a local PR firm and had come in to help our design firm uh, expand our business. And we were, became friends because of the jewelry I was wearing, Mm -hmm. Uh, if you will, kindred spirits with a love for jewelry. That's awesome. So fast forward a couple of years, we, we went on different, different paths. I being in the interior design world, I, there were so many ways in which I could explore creativity. I, while working at the interior design firm took on responsibilities, um, branding responsibilities, custom invitations. I actually developed my graphic design skills, my very rudimentary design skills. I started there and I, honest to God, fell in love with fonts. I fell in love with paper. I fell in love with graphic design and hand making things and supporting the design firm and all of their different branding needs. Um, And It was really exciting and it just opened my eyes. So when I left that company, I went on a two and a half year journey where I taught myself more graphic design. I taught myself photography. It was wildly creative. I did everything from handmade wedding invitations to supporting clients with logo design and doing my own design, jewelry design business and painting murals. It was, like I said, wildly creative. And then July of 2005, I was like, this is fun, but I am not making money. How do I do this? How how can I have something more steady and stable? Mm -hmm. And the universe conspires in my favor. I got off a phone with um, with a friend and he said, you know, Kendra, she started a design, joy design business. Have you ever thought about working for her? So I called her up and she was looking to hire an in-house marketing person. And I, I accepted the job, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was 17 years ago. Wow. I mean, well, all right. There's definitely a couple, I mean, there's a bunch of things I got out of all that, but (laughs) a couple that really stand out, which I think are so key to, to point out for people just starting or getting one, you dressed the part you wanted, not the part you were, you know, like people take positions, you, you wanted to just get into that company that you wanted to, that world you wanted to be a part of, but right. you dressed like the creator, the, you know, all of what you wanted to be. So I think that's really key. I also think just following your passion, I think ultimately, I know there's a lot of starving artists or starving this or whatever, and, but I think that figuring out how to somehow connect that with, you know, you were smart enough to know, okay, now I need to make money. And but you were a marketer. You obviously were a marketer because you've been selling your own stuff. So you were doing that. And those are skill sets that it's like, for me, I know like when I've done things like that, where I sit there and say, well, how am I an expert at it? But I've been doing it and you called yourself an expert. So anyway, all of those things, <laughs> is just, I, I think that's great because women especially don't tend to do that. I know I've been guilty of that where I know I have these skills. I know I am that person, but because I wasn't ever hired as, whatever that title is, I don't necessarily consider myself an expert, but you were brave enough, stupid enough, whatever, right? <laughs> whatever. I just took the chance. You just did it and th- look what it led to. I mean, that's amazing. That is so awesome. Thank you. So anyway, so obviously you start them with Kendra and then you really used all of your skills. Not, I mean, the, not just the marketing side, which is of course, um, big part of what you do, but I know in the beginning, I mean, you guys were all contributing to every, there wasn't really one hat to wear, I'm sure. Oh gosh, no, as a small team in growing and desiring to grow the business, you, you wear many hats. Uh, yeah, I, I, when we were entering into expanding the brand in 2010 or expanding the 
business. We didn't even think of it as a brand at that time, right? We're, we were just a wholesale business wanting to stay afloat after a recession. And so Kendra's like, okay, well, we need to start a, an e-com site and let's go and open up a store on South Congress uh, at the heart of Austin. And let's just, let's just do whatever we can and try it out. Well, through that process, social media came. So I was in charge of the e-com site, running the e-com business. I ran the e-com business doing all of the back end. Um, I, I did get a, a few contract work and, and help over the over the course of time. And I did end up getting an assistant that led to a smaller team and of course built, built our into house agency over the years. But I ran the e-com site for the first 3 million in sales. And then I was like, um, I think maybe we should hire um, <laughs> someone who knows how to do this better yeah. so I can continue to market it. So it's, it's yeah, we just, we did it until okay. we knew we needed to bring in other experts to take us to that next level, or it just simply more, more of the more team building the team so we can then go to that next level. As a founding member, with an anything is possible um, energy around you, you know, let's do it, let's try it. That's that's the world we lived in. It was just a let's try, let's see, and there was constant uh, personal involvement, professional involvement, and that's honestly why I've been here for so long. Is I've continuously grown over the years, acquiring new skills, be and now new leadership opportunities. Yeah, no, I think that's amazing, and um, I think. And um, first, I want to say I didn't mean to call you stupid. I should have said naive. That was the oh, part, so. oh, it's fine. It's fine. Sometimes I felt stupid. <laughs> <laughs> naive, like, yeah, stupid, uh, definitely I inexperienced. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but um, I have to say, because you, as you said, you started off, you were these women just, I know that initially it was sort of like the super seven women. And so I want to kind of go take off of that because you guys were kind of these superheroes just doing everything. Get, you know, like you said, e-com, okay, you're going to do that. Social media, whatever. You were just taking on all the challenges. So I want to ask you, <laughs> in your real life, are you a superhero? Is, is there a superhero that you would be if uh, someone were to come down to you and say, okay, who are you? <laughs> and you know, the superhero that comes to mind, you know, those Care Bears, you know, those Care Bears back in the day, they all had their unique character yeah. and they beamed from their heart and, and bellies mm -hmm. this love or luck or whatever was their unique character. I loved Braveheart. I loved, remember the cousins of the Care Bears was like the second generation. I loved that. I loved him. I loved his character. I loved his bravery. I loved that he always led with heart. And I loved that he, that was his he could be that in his full mm -hmm. capacity and allowed everyone their own space. But when they beamed their, their light together and their unique powers together, they healed the world. So <laughs> that's my answer. <laughs> you are a care bear. I, I don't know if he's coming out in any superhero movie anytime soon. <laughs> um, we can write it in and see, maybe they'll, <laughs> they'll add that. But I think that's great. No, and, and I mean, obviously every, not just organization, but life, that's a good thing to bring to the, to the, you know, group or to <laughs> who you're working with, because I mean, and that's, it's, and I think just talking with you, I can see that. Like if I were having an issue or wanting advice or whatever, I feel like you just have this optimism that just beams from you, you know, and just, you know, almost you feel like, okay, I can do it maybe by talking with you. So I'm sure that that's a response you get from a lot of people, whether it be at work or in your personal life, that people just feel better, maybe or more just. Okay. I hope so. I hope so. That's definitely my intention. Yeah, no, you def there's definitely that light. So I really, uh, I, I can completely agree, even though, as I said, I question the superhero angle of the Care Bear, but <laughs> you know, superpower. <laughs> we'll see. You know, when the Marvels are making their next <laughs> movie, you know, maybe there'll be a, a dark version of the Care Bear or something like. That. Gosh, <laughs> we, we can try. So I want to ask you in terms of you know you obviously with what you guys have done with Kendra Scott and just it's amazing the success you've brought to it. 
and there's a lot of learning along the way, what you've just been talking about. Are you, I mean, we all continue to learn. Are you continuing to learn? And I know the answer to that is yes, but what have you maybe more recently learned? Has there been a major, like a revelation or something that really impacted you or really was like, okay, this is good to know and moving forward or good to know and don't do again or just whatever it may be? I, I mentioned earlier, I really believe in a benevolent universe. I believe that the universe is conspiring in all of our favor, whether we believe it or not. Um, I have also come to realize through life experiences that I'm the only one that gets in my way. And so when things happen as they do um, in life, I have a mantra that I learned from Ian Love Van Zant uh, that I say to myself, challenge comes my way. That could be, you know, me having ch challenges with my seven-year-old son in the morning getting ready and he's not doing what I want. And it could be as mundane as that, or it's also, you know, the world is, the world is challenging and I don't know how to face it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to face those challenges. I say to myself, yes, thank you. Yes, universe, I accept this challenge as a learning opportunity. And that mantra, yes, thank you. I'll tell you, it gets me through my days. It gets me through the big moments and the small moments. And that that's a life lesson and really, that I apply, it is a life lesson that I apply daily. Wow, that's, I mean, that's really, a pot, again, it's a positive way to look at things, you know, because you, as you said, everyone's gonna face challenges. I'm curious, you've said that some of the times of the challenges are when you get in the way of yourself. Like, talk, is there an example that you can think of that you did that and what way do you sort of, you know, because I, I think that is something that many of us experience. Well, <laughs> There's been moments in my career that it hasn't been just this easy. We, I've had, we've had a series of different people come in, um, leaders that come in, challenge different ways. And I love a good challenge, but there's been times that my career path has shifted and been a little bit different than what I was thinking. Um, and looking back, um, some of those times and the decisions that were made, I didn't feel like I was in the driver's seat and I was angry and I was frustrated, um, straight up had a victim, you know, mentality. And when I, I really do and focus in on my spiritual and emotional and physical development, it is really important to me to have clarity of mind, clarity of heart, and so that I can lead with a loving presence. And so when I can't show up because I'm angry or because I feel like the world has done something to me, well, that works for so long, but it also can keep me stuck. And I felt stuck at different times over my career. Um, funny enough, I mean, in this wonderful, beautiful, like anything is possible way, I too have experienced some, some moments, some really tough moments and recognizing that everything comes to me, whether I am conscious of it or not for my best interest, even in especially those challenging moments, well, that's where the real learning comes. And so I've come to realize that if I am unhappy or frustrated or angry, I can change that. I can, yes, thank you to my life and sit and reflect and do the work to get clear as to what is that gift? What am I needing to learn here so I can move on and continue to grow and be a good human in this world instead of one that's bitter or frustrated. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, and it's, I think it's an amazing attitude to have, you know, like I said, I think that we're all going to hit those obstacles. And I do think a lot of, well, I think a lot of people, but I think women, especially in general, can get in the way of themselves, whether it's insecurities or how they perceive people seeing them or whatever it may be. And then they respond accordingly. And I think to take that step back and say, okay, what's the reality or how can I change that reality to make it more positive is what we all need to do. It's the power of the mind. I mean, it begins, the universe is created from thoughts and thoughts can shift our perspective on how we look at the world, how we react to life. And if there is a way that you can create your yes, thank you moments, and you can remember that the universe is benevolent, always working in your favor, and, and you can come back to that somehow, even when it's challenging, it can help you get through those tough times. Yep. No, I completely It's worked agree. for me. No, well, it <laughs> and it is a practice. Tell, I'll tell you that. Well, and like I said, I do think it's amazing that you have such this positive, optimistic attitude. And I would love to continue talking. Unfortunately, we ha don't have any more time, but it is just so lovely to talk with you and learn more about you. And I can't wait to actually see you in person in a month in uh, Lake Tahoe. So I'm very excited about that. And we, even though it will be about strategy, we can, we can add some more personal conversation to the discussion too. <laughs> oh, I, I love it. I am looking forward to giving you a hug and just celebrating life together and figuring out how to navigate a marketing world and the branding world and be really cool humans making cool things happen in this world. Yes, then bring your Care Bear. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it right here. He's right here. Always with you. <laughs> so You're good. so sweet. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching. Again, we do this every week. Um, if you have a marketer, a woman marketer that you want to sort of pull back the curtain on, please let me know and I will do my best. Thanks again.